Courtney, and this week John and Lauren join me in the hot seat. G'day folks. Hi guys. We've got a full show and we take a look at the forced closure of Aboriginal communities and we have a story on the annual paddle against poverty. Uh, we'll also be inside UOW's new $35 million sciences teaching facility that officially opened yesterday. But first up, we have John with the news of the day. Christine Milne has stepped down as the leader of the Greens party. The new leader is Richard Di Natale. He was elected unopposed. Scientists fear that the aftershock of Nepal's earthquakes may not be over. Satellite images of Nepal have revealed that the Earth's surface has collapsed by about 1.37 metres near Kathmandu. But experts fear that the full first force of the April 25th earthquake is yet to be felt. Three federal Labor MPs representing Western Sydney Electrics have confirmed they, would, they could switch their votes in Parliament to support gay marriage. Chris Bowen, Ed Husick and Julie Owens were among the 98 MPs across the House of Representatives who helped vote, help, who helped vote down the same-sex marriage bill in last Parliament. This week, all three have publicly declared that they would be changing their vote and backing the bill. Funeral services for the Bali Nine ringleaders Andrew Chan and Myron Sukumaran will be held in Sydney this week. The two men were executed along with six others by firing squad on an Indonesian prison island last Wednesday. Both families invited members of the public to attend the ceremonies in Balcombe Hills and Castle Hill this weekend. US actress Ellen Albertini Dow has died at age 101, best known for her role as the rapping grandmother in The Wedding Singer and more recently the film The Wedding Crashes. She will always be remembered for her countless roles and sense of humour. campaign to stop the closure of remote Aboriginal communities in Western Australia have spread to the Illawarra. Hundreds have gathered in Wollongong CBD to protest the closures. An upside down flag and a call of anger. Close the gap, not the communities. The Wollongong March was part of a larger national day of action opposing the Barnett government's plans to pull funding from up to 150 of its state's Aboriginal communities. The move would leave over 20,000 Indigenous people displaced from their homeland and culture. The closures are not isolated to Western Australia though, with fears remote Aboriginal groups from across the country could face the same fate. They're fearful of the coal seam gas coming through there, which is going to make them move as well. Distress is the word and feeling being used most here today. It may be grey and it may be wet, but nothing will dampen this group's passion and determination to send one clear message. The forced closures of Aboriginal communities is not OK. We're talking bulldozers, we're talking forced removals, we're talking about a genocidal uh, of a culture. Aboriginal people have been here for a lot longer than colonial Australia. Um, we don't give them the value or the rights they deserve. They, they treat us with contempt and disrespect and that's just not on. The movement's hashtag SOS Black Australia has been trending on Twitter from the day, which received strong, diverse support. It's awesome to see the community, black, white and everyone joining in. Um, that's what it's also representing. For us to move on together, we have to be inclusive with everyone. This is an extremely controversial topic and th there is a lot of debate around it. It is this issue has sparked emotions all across the country. Let's just hope that it's resolved. <laughs> Australia's chief scientist has officially opened UOW's $35 million science teaching facility. Professor Ian Chubb unveiled the three-level, 7,000 square metre facility yesterday. The new sciences training facility has provided an opportunity to reflect on and develop new approaches for teaching sciences at UOW. We're learning all the time and we'll get better at it through facilities like this, staff like this and students like this. The purpose-built laboratories were designed to mirror contemporary industry and government research facilities. This enables graduates to have lab experience directly relevant to the industries that employ them. I did science in high school and I almost failed it. I just pulled out and did modern history as soon as I could. Oh, I was terrible. I was definitely an arts and drama student, but this building is fantastic and hopefully it's an incentive for future scientists across the country. take a short break and when we return we'll be joined with reporter Alex Pike who covered the paddle against poverty. My name is Sydney Pede. I am the 
editorial content manager today, or one of them. Daniel Jeffrey, I'm a topic editor today. My name is Peter Prandelos and I'm hosting the afternoon shift of Radio U today. My name is Grace Stranger and I'm the editorial content manager in the newsroom today. I think the best part about being a journalist is putting faces to stories and really realising that behind every story is a human person with a real life and a real job and a real family and, and you get to express that to the rest of the community. Australians, we love sport and sport is my passion so being able to talk to everyone about sport and learn more about sport and then tell people about what's going on in the sporting world, it is just so cool. The amount of practical experience that you get working within these newsroom subjects where it's the actual experience of being a journalist without being out there in the world so it's not as daunting but you're still getting great experience, you're writing stories constantly, you're working to deadlines and yeah, it's getting you out there. Uh, Radio U is a great initiative run by the UOW. Uh, through it, I was able to gain an internship with 97.3 ABC Illawarra. And um, yeah, it, through that internship, it gave me great insights into what working in radio is like in the real world and the rigors and fast pace of a newsroom. So I'm all for Radio U. hundred incredibly motivated ocean lovers have taken on high seas and low temperatures to raise awareness and money to fight poverty. Reporter Alex Pike was among the many who braved the cold for the worthy cause. Thank you Alex for joining us at News Desk. No worries, thanks for having me. So Alex, would you be able to tell us a little bit about this event? Yeah sure, basically it's run by Christian Surfers Australia and anyone can register, young or old, and you paddle about 14 to 15 k's which takes around Three hours, and if the weather's good, it's pretty easy and a great way to get involved for a good cause. Fantastic. Well, let's take a look at the video. Thank you all for showing up. Clearly, that is going to be really difficult. So, yeah, just stick together. <laughs> okay. Big swells and rough conditions made the organisation of the event tough for Christian Surfers Australia. So basically the decision is that it was challenging enough for people to get out the shore break and paddle against the wind for a while that we're going to make it a shorter distance. For some it was their first time in the paddle. I know I'll probably get out there, maybe. Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm just watching everyone get smashed now. Um. <laughs> Jet skis helped the strugglers and a second group left from Akama Beach. But after two hours, everyone was out. Staying together was challenging, the paddlers regrouping three times along the way. But after 14 kilometres, they all arrived together. I'm so tired. I'm wrecked. It was just very lumpy. Yeah, the wind was going the wrong way. But it was worth it for a good cause, raising over $14,000 for children in poverty. Alex Pike. UOW News. Was the day an overall success in raising awareness? Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah, there was over 100 people there and they ended up raising, raising quite a bit of money as well. And it's just, yeah, they, they raised up over $14,000 in the end, I think, yeah. Cool. So you were there. Can you tell us what the atmosphere was like at the event? I was a little bit apprehensive at the start. People were a little bit iffy on going in because it, it's the hardest part is getting out. It's really tiring. But once everyone was out there, everyone was really positive. The sun came out and it was just the wind holding them back, really. Well, awesome. Thank you, Alex, for joining us on set today. No worries. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. And after the break, it's a New South Wales scale model competition and the return of Turt Talk. This is a story we have to try and keep in perspective. Well, at least in scale. The annual New South Wales scale model competition has again been run in Wollongong from modest beginnings. This event is all about small things that has now become the largest scale model competition in the state. 364 models from the past present and future were exhibited at the Elora Sports Stadium. You know, if you have a historical interest in any particular subject, you can you know, build a model of a plane or a car or a vehicle or a person um, that represents a period of history that they're interested in. All up, 38 categories were represented. This competition was the biggest of its kind in New South Wales so far and drew both experienced and beginners. Yeah. God, I love this kind of thing, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really a sucker for scale models. What do you guys think? Oh, I don't know. I don't think I'm talented enough to... It's, they're just tiny little things. I have to get in there and paint them, and I just don't think I'd be able to do it. Mm. Extremely intricate. I don't think I'd be able to do it, but I'd love to see it. Yeah, it's quite a challenge. It is. Well, it's fantastic that it's getting more coverage around the state. Now 
it's time for this week's Turt Talk where Beck and Jared are discussing Mother's Day. Hi, this is Turt Talk. I'm Beck. And I'm Jared. Um, so on Sunday is Mother's Day. Yay! Yeah, I'm excited because I am. Cups and. I am giving birth. Really late. Congratulations! Yes, yes, I thought that I'd bring up the news here because it seems like the most appropriate place to tell everyone. We're all very proud of you. Yeah, I'm not Science nuts. has really come a long way. <laughs> it's a very long way. <laughs> um, so, speaking of Mother's Day, so I wanted yeah. to do like sort of a mother related segment today because okay. Mother's Day is coming up. Basically, I read this really cool article that uh, there were these two women in China yep. and they gave birth to significantly larger babies because uh, during their pregnancy, they were in... Oh, okay. Um, Good one, Beck. That was your phone. <laughs> Good one. God, don't you know phone etiquette? If we no, were in I the don't. movies right now, yeah. we'd be out. Which, I, I hate that too. I, like, there's been times where no, I've no, been... No, no, no. We've got to stay on. No, <laughs> no. This is, I want to talk about this. The amount of times I've been in the movies and f***ing people's phones have gone off is insane. Or I, people checking their phone. Right? I saw someone on a tablet in the movies once. Really? Yes. What were they doing? They were just on fucking Facebook. Wouldn't it be great if they were like looking up the IMDb score? Yeah, yeah, they were yeah, like synopsis of movies. <laughs> Watching the trailer. <laughs> um, no, okay, back on topic. Yeah. So I read this really cool article um, where these two women in China gave birth to significantly larger babies because right. during their pregnancy they uh, were in unpolluted air. Okay. So, you know, like, the air pollution in China is a really bad problem. You mean polluted air? No, they they went to a place that had unpolluted air, and that's why their babies were bigger. Why would they have oh, bigger babies if it was polluted air? I don't know. I thought they were, like, mutant big. <laughs> I thought they were, <laughs> I thought they were like, 15 stone. And some fallout shit yeah. there. Okay, so, um, so so they went to a cleaner place, and they had bigger babies than usual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, what, that got me thinking, like, isn't it weird how much the woman's behavior in pregnancy can affect the baby yeah, and yeah. then that got me thinking how much um responsibility should be on the mother like or for their lifestyle changes during pregnancy like the autonomy of the mother versus the autonomy of the baby it sort of brought up this yeah. whole like internal debate of like um choice versus life and stuff like that right okay so what do you think about uh women you know, and prenatal care and like what their responsibility I, i'm pro-choice i think that women should have the right to decide okay. uh, with their own bodies but it's a thing of like at what point in the life cycle of the baby mm. does this baby stop being a fetus and become an autonomous human being this has been beck and jared uh, with Turt Talk. I love those two. They are such characters. Can we just have one on each side next time we do the show? I think we should. They definitely made some very worthy comments there. But to the point, what are you guys doing for Mother's Day? Oh, I've got a little surprise planned. I won't say anything because she'll be watching. But, you know, look forward to it. I'm not too sure just yet, but I'll have something in store. Oh, well, let's hope everyone has a fantastic Mother's Day. And don't forget to spoil your mothers. Rain and gale force winds have lashed the Illawarra coast today. New shoes, Sally. How are they? <laughs> Yeah, but it's like the principle of the matter. Okay, yep. DC or Marvel? Rain wasn't the only thing in the air over the weekend. The sound of jazz filled Carmel with the Illawarra Autumn Festival, entertaining crowds of music lovers from across our region. Saxophones, guitars, drums, pianos, dancing shoes, and vocals. The region's annual jazz festival has proven a hit for the 29th year running. Over two and a half days in multiple locations in the area, hundreds reveled in a showcase of 22 of the best local and national jazz bands. It's such a, a fun genre of music. and It's a very collegial environment of musicians, singers, guests, their family, friends, kids. It's a kid-friendly festival. It's a wonderful grouping of people that listen to great music, talented artists and live music in Wollongong. You can tell by the atmosphere here today and everyone loves the music. It's good for your soul. 
Okay, okay guys, I know I, I, love a, I love a bit of jazz. Do you guys love a bit of jazz? Of course, there's nothing sexy than a saxophone. Oh, now, I'm, I'm not a jazz lover, I'm more of a rock man, but I can see the appeal. Definitely. Well, it looks like it would have been a fantastic day. Now, if you did go to the event, please do hashtag us at Newsdesk, hashtag Newsdesk at UAWTV Multimedia. How do you all go? What do you think? I'm liking it. I think we did better than last week. Oh, Ooh, that's a bit of bit controversy. Of, I'm willing to start a rivalry. I think we did great. Bit biased, but you know, I think we're all going to just get better in time, right? <laughs> True. Um, thanks for joining us this week on News Desk, and make sure you check out all of our work on our YouTube channel, UOW TV Multimedia, and we will catch you guys next week. Bye. See you later.